Good morning. What a blessing to be in the presence of the Lord this morning. It's always a blessing. What, what, what a privilege. We magnify the name of the Lord. We glorify the name of the Lord. Today is Palm Sunday. So if you know church calendar across the globe, everybody's celebrating Jesus getting into Jerusalem for his last week, basically, before he dies. And we, we celebrate that which is one of the greatest events, probably the greatest event that has ever happened in human history, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We want to pray for our brothers and sisters who are sick, that the Lord may heal them. We want to remember family members and people who need the Lord and just pray for them and intercede for them. Every single person that still is not saved, that the Lord will reveal himself to them and show them the way, the way to salvation, the way to heaven. So praise God, praise God. Our retreat is in less than two weeks now. We're excited. And so we are going to have some special programs of prayer. Just check our uh, group chats of sanctification ministry. We'll give you a schedule of how we're going to pray for the next two weeks. Uh, A prayer that will start tomorrow and will end at the retreat basically shall we pray Lord in the name of Jesus I thank you for you are amazingly God beyond understanding beyond measure beyond comprehension you are God thank you Father for blessing us this morning with your word for blessing us with life for blessing us with the opportunity to worship you the opportunity to magnify your name, the opportunity to glorify you. I can only say thank you, Jesus. To your amazing grace. Thank you to your amazing love. To your amazing mercies and faithfulness. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, God, that we, on that day, you decided to go down to Jerusalem to face the greatest suffering, to face crucifixion to face condemnation accusation to face everything wrong and bad and take my place and take the place of my sister and my brother we can never be grateful enough I magnify your name I glorify your name in the name of Jesus bless us God as we worship you this morning Be with us, God, as we surrender ourselves to you so you may speak to us, so you may heal us, direct us, give us orientation, and lead us, and lead us through God, misunderstanding, lead us through confusion, all these things that life is throwing at us, all these questions without answers. Here we are. Speak to us. Lead us. Reveal yourself to us in a special way. We magnify your name. We glorify your name. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name. For you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be worshipped. We can never worship you enough. We can never worship you well enough. You are beyond our worship. You are beyond everything we can give you, God. Thank you. Thank you for being our God. Receive us and welcome us into your presence as we worship you. Bless our service. Bless my brother, my sister. Bless us for hearing your word. The Bible said that the word sanctifies us. The word heals us. 
Thank you, God. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of Timothy that prayer and the word sanctifies us. So thank you, Father. Thank you, God. We have an opportunity to pray. We have an opportunity to hear your word. We have an opportunity to worship you, to be grateful to you. Thank you that that day you did not back up. You went right straight into Jerusalem for our salvation. You are the way maker. You are the way the truth of God. You made the way by dying on the cross. A way for us to see God. A way to eternal life. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Amen. 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 Yes, we are here to praise the Lord again for his grace, just like Pastor Joe opened up in prayer, for his mercy and for his love. And I would, I would like to just put you in context for our worship this morning. You know, I'm in uh, Genesis 37. I'm reminded of Joseph, the son of Jacob. You know, when I think of his testimony, of his story, I know that through his hardship and the trial that he went through, he would tell you that yes, God positively favored him, but he would want us to remember that that favor was not rooted in the outcome of his situation of, or, or of our situation, but in the attitude and response, you know, that we take while we're facing all these hardship challenges and situation that comes in our lives. So in the, this morning, as we're worshiping, as we're lifting, lifting our voices, I would like to call you and just to remind you, yes, you're looking at the prize. You're looking at when all of what you're facing will be done. But also remember that the grace of God is in the attitude that you're adopting in this moment while you are facing this trial, while you're going through whatever you're going through. So as you're worshiping, just be mindful of that. And may you praise him. Praise him with all your heart, with all your soul, even if your soul is bleeding in this moment, even if you're rejoicing in this moment. But come and praise him in the fullness of your being, understanding what it means to truly be a son and daughter of Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Mira 
the way No man skin Light in the darkness My God That is who you are Yes, we see Waymaker, yes Waymaker, miracle word Promise keep Light in the darkness My God That is who you are Waymaker, miracle word Promise keep Light in the darkness My God That is who you are
you are. That is who 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 you are. Miracle worker is who you are. Thank you for your presence. Your mighty power. Your we Jehovah love Jehovah. your name. Jehovah Shama. Jehovah Shama. Yeah. We worship you this morning. Thank you, Jesus. That is who you are. Yes, we have declared. In every of our life situations. Nobody loves you, Lord. That is who you are. The mighty warrior, the miracle worker. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Oh. King of all days. 
He can never bow down to you enough, Father. I come like the prodigal son, laying my life in front of you, surrendering everything to you, recognizing, God, that we have sinned against you, that we are not even worthy to worship you. But at the same time, God, we come to seize that grace that you have given us to stand before you and worship you, to stand before you and say that you are our God. In the book of Exodus and even Deuteronomy, the Bible reads, Hear, O Israel, I am God, your God. In the book of Deuteronomy, you told us you were our God. But allow us this morning in our prayer to tell you, you are our God. Yes, you are God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name. I have never known any other God. And I will never. I don't need any other God. You are my God. From the womb of my mother. My brother, my sister, you knew all of us. You were our God before we even knew there was a God. Thank you, Father. In the womb of our mothers, you have called us to be your servants and some of us to be the Josephs of our families, to be the deliverers to God is and will always be the glory in Jesus name Amen 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 Hallelujah people of God we pray to we serve we worship an amazing God Whose word is the truth? The truth that sets us free from things we cannot even imagine. So we've been talking about familiar spirits. And familiar spirits are spirits that have been in a place, in a life, in a family, in a community, even in a government, in a nation, in a continent, for so long. that they become so familiar with those people. They know your weaknesses. They know, how to, they know how to sneak in their evil plans and programs. They know how to get to you because they know you that well. There are spirits that have been in most families. They've been there for so long. And one way to detect familiar spirits is to look at patterns of evil in your family. It is very simple. You cannot just take any topic and begin to observe. So if you say, for example, marriage, just check your family in terms of marriages. You may see some patterns. If you take jobs, just check in your family in terms of jobs. How do people get jobs? What happens? You, you may see some patterns of evil. You can get another topic. Religious life. Christianity in your family. Look at the patterns. Just, just, you can see the patterns of evil. And those are familiar spirits working. You can take another topic. Universities. Diseases. You may see some patterns. So familiar spirits, you don't really need a prophet to prophesy or to give you a word of knowledge about it. You can just observe. You can observe two, three, four generations and just check how many things are repeating. They are very indicative of familiar spirits. Now, the good news is God has an answer to that. 
God has an answer. In every family, God will always call at least one person to be the vessel of deliverance. And that's the one we have called the deliverer. The reason why I put it into quotations is because the ultimate deliverer is Jesus Christ. Even if Jesus can use me to deliver somebody, I am not the deliverer. The true deliverer, the, the one who does all that work is Christ. It's just Christ in me, Christ through me. However, for the sake of this teaching, we call that person that God is using as the deliverer so that we know we're talking about this human being that God is using to bring about deliverance. Thank you, Father. And so, if you are a deliverer, you are that vessel that God has called to challenge, to destroy familiar spirit in your life, your family, your community, sometimes even your race. There are things that some, some races do, some others don't. For example, your tribe, it could, be, it could be way bigger and just getting bigger and bigger. God picked somebody in every single family. There is at least one person that God is going to use to deliver. And if you are that person, these are the things that you know you are that person. We talked about the family context. God has a plan, but it's a plan bigger than your life. And you are born into a mess. See, you, you, sometimes you even wonder, why was I even born in this family? You were just born into a mess. That's the reason why God has to choose you from your mother's womb. Because God knows already what you are coming into. You are not just being born into a crazy family. You are being born into a crazy world. Because the plan of God is not just for your family. It's bigger than your family. But you, it starts with your family. Your family is your first indicator of who you are in Christ. If you are the Joseph. And so we took the example of Joseph. Already in his family, he is born into a mess. He's born into a father. In a family where the father didn't really get the woman he loved. It's already a mess. He was given another woman. He was given Leah instead of Rachel. And so Leah now, knowing that this is not her marriage, began to give children to Jacob. So she gave some children, some some sons. And then when he got Rachel, Rachel could not give birth. So Rachel had to give her servant to bear children for her. And Leah, although she already has children, she's afraid that maybe <laughs> Rachel's servant is going to give more children to Jacob. So she also gets her own servant to give children. By the time Joseph is born, he's got ten brothers of three mothers. Uh, uh, of two. Yeah, three mothers already. That's the family he's born into. That's already a mess. He's born into a mess. He's born into a family where Familiar spirits have operated for a long time. But if you are the deliverer, we saw it last week, you begin to see what is wrong already. Joseph could just observe and look at his brothers and know this is wrong. And he begins to report it to his dad. And Jacob understands that, that this child is special. 
He's special. And he makes him a wonderful garment of, with many colors. He is his miraculous, his miracle child. And to top on that, he has these dreams that will definitely make everybody angry. And that's where we stopped last time. In your family context, they will not understand you because you are challenging the status quo of the family, a status quo that had been established by familiar spirits. And you becoming, being the light that God is bringing into this family, you can see so many wrong things that others don't see. And by revealing those to them, they are not ready for that. It creates problems. You will be in trouble, not because you are a bad person. You will be in trouble because what is in you is bigger than you and is bigger than everybody else around you and is confusing and troubling to them and making them nervous and frustrated. So, now the next thing, I said it the other time, is they're going to make you pay. Today we're going to talk about the price. <laughs> there is a price to pay when you are the deliverer. There's a price to pay. There's a price to pay. And we're going to get into that. S I'm going to read in Genesis chapter 37. Still in the same chapter. Just going to read 23 to 27. And it came to pass, when Joseph was come unto his brethren, that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him. And they took him and cast him into a pit. And the pit was empty. There was no water in it. And they sat down to eat bread. And they lifted up their eyes and looked. And behold, a company of Ish Ishmaelites came from uh, Gilead, with their camels bearing spicery and balm and myrrh, going to carry it down to Egypt. And Judah said unto his brothers, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelite, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. And his brethren were content. There is a price to pay when you are the deliverer. But last week already I told you, you are not going to die. And we're going to see why. You're not going to die. God is going to protect you. But you are going to suffer. It's amazing how God shows Joseph, your brother, your, your entire family is going to bow to you. But it does not show him uh, that they're going to sell you as a slave. You are going to suffer. You are going to do this and this and that. Why? Let me tell you why. Because God shows you the end. If you are the deliverer, you are going to pay a price to train you. God is going to train you, to prepare you to be that person because God is going to lift you up above familiar spirit. But you need to be prepared so that you don't fill yourself with pride. You don't fill you. You don't go astray from God. He has to train you. He has to prepare you. And he's showing you the end. They're going to bow to you. A lot of things are going to happen to you. But if you have not seen what you saw in the dream, know that it's not over. You're not going to die until I fulfill what I wanted to fulfill with you. 
God shows you what is positive so that that can help you bear that which is negative. It's the hope that God gives you so that no matter what happens to you, just remember the promise of God. Remember the vision of God. He has a dream. In his dream, he's seeing a transformation of his family. He's seeing his uh, proud brothers bowing to him. He's seeing this uh, dysfunctional family coming together and bow. As long as, until that happens, just know I will be with you. You're not going to die. So they are plotting here to kill him. They are plotting to kill him. And when he comes, of course, they have an opportunity to kill him. But they ended up just tearing his clothes. They remove the glory of his father's house. They unclothe him of all that glory, of all those praises. And they, s they throw him in a pit where there was no water. In other words, where there was no life. They wanted him to die. There was no life in the pit. But then, Judah, once he saw the Ishmaelite coming, he's like, why should we kill him? Maybe we should just sell him to the Ishmaelite. They will not kill you. Nobody's going to kill you. You're not going to die. They may plot as many things against you as they want. They may make you go through a lot of suffering, but you're not going to die. You're not going to die. Because let me say this to you. I want you to open your eyes now. That's here, that's where I'm going to go into the true deliverer. Only the true, the ultimate deliverer dies. That's Jesus Christ. And we're going to understand why. The person Jesus is using today is not going to die. Because we, you may be the Joseph of your family. You may be the deliverer in your family. But you are not worthy to die for somebody. I want you to understand that. God is going to use you to destroy stronghold. God is going to use you to destroy all the work of familiar spirit. But you are not worthy to die for anybody. You cannot die for somebody. We cannot. No, we can't. We can suffer for people. But we cannot die for somebody. Because we are not worthy to die for anybody. The ultimate deliverer is the only person that is worthy to die for anybody. Let me give you an example. A very simple example. And that's why we go into Palm Sunday. So we go from Joseph. Joseph has to pay a price. And we're going to see, we're going to study more about the price he's paying. His own brothers beat him up, unclothe him, throw him in a pit. He has to spend time in a place where there's no water. And then they, se they sell him as a slave. It's a price he's paying. It's not fun to live that kind of thing. But before I get back to that, the true deliverer, Jesus Christ, is the only person who pays the price of death. We can pray, pay all kinds of prices, but the one of dying belongs to Jesus Christ. Nobody is worthy to die for anybody else. I'll give you an example. Sometimes pastors, we... We take care of people like veterans. They've been at war, you know, and they come back from war and they need some spiritual guidance and care and counseling and all that. I've noticed one thing. When they are at war and maybe somebody's about to shoot them and their friend takes the bullet for them. That happens a lot. You know, like, your friend takes a bullet for you. And literally, you would say, he died for you, right? He died for you. 
But because nobody is worthy to die for you, no human being, it does not free them. The one who stays alive is confused. It does not give them peace. They begin to struggle. Their mind is, str is struggling. It, it should have been me dying. Why, why did she jump? Why did she, he die? It troubles them instead of freeing them. Do you know why? Because nobody on earth is worthy to die. And they feel so indebted. It does not give them peace. But when Jesus died for you and me, it gave us peace. When a man does for you, it's like you stay indebted. But when Christ died for us, we didn't feel indebted. He paid the debt. It's very interesting. We are grateful. We don't feel indebted. We just, don't, we just feel not grateful enough. Hallelujah. We celebrate that Jesus died for us. Believe me, it's, I, I don't know if there's anybody on earth that is celebrating that another human being died for them. I don't know. I want to see that. But nobody's worthy to die. Even if you are the Joseph of your family. Even if you are the deliverer in your family. You are not Christ. Only Christ is the ultimate deliverer. And so the ultimate price can only be paid by the ultimate deliverer. And that is dying on the cross. And so as we talk about the price to pay, it's not you dying for your family. We'll explain it another time. That price. That price is God training you to fulfill the mission God has given you. But Christ had to die. When you destroy a familiar spirit in your family, it does not save your family. It frees them from familiar spirits. Only when Christ paid the price on the cross, that saves you and me and everybody else. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can be delivered in a church we can kick out demons out of you and you still go to hell. Salvation is in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The deliverer, Joseph. That's why even if you are the deliverer, Never forget the owner of the mission. Never forget the ultimate mission in Christ, which is salvation. Salvation. Don't just pray for your family. Preach to your family. Preach about Jesus Christ. Because yes, I can destroy all kinds of familiar spirits. You see, if you go to church, they can pray for you. And you get healed miraculously. But that does not mean you are saved. Salvation is in Christ. That's why when Jesus sent those people, the Seveni, they went and when they came back, they were like rejoicing. The, healed, the sick were healed and demons obeyed to us. And Jesus said, do not rejoice that demons obey to you. But that your name is in the book of life. Salvation is the main goal of Christ coming on earth to save us. In the book of John chapter 11, it's very clear. Jesus came to take Lazarus out of the tomb 
which is salvation, resurrection. But then Jesus said to the others and bound him. As deliverers, as Josephs of our family, we have the power to unbound. We have the power to set free from evil spirit. But only Jesus has the power to, deal, uh, to save somebody. He paid the ultimate price. A price as the ultimate deliverer. Today, we are just little deliverers under Christ. Whose mission is not to save anybody. Whose mission is to proclaim the Savior, Jesus Christ. And he gives us the authority to destroy evil spirits. The weapons that we use are not carnal. They are spiritual. Given to us by the power of the Holy Spirit. To destroy stronghold. To change even reasoning. Uh, in the name of Jesus. We can destroy uh, the work of familiar spirit. For which we are going to pay a price. We're going to see that later. But the ultimate price of salvation uh, only belongs to Christ. So don't wake up one morning and say, I am going to die for my brother. You are not worthy to die. Pray, fast, suffer, sacrifice your meal for your brother. But you cannot die for your brother. You cannot die for your sister. Only Christ can die. Because Christ is the holiest, the innocent sacrifice. It's the only innocent sacrifice. Only Christ is worthy to die. To die for anybody. And so today, we are celebrating Palm Sunday. And, and I know maybe you have like a palm leaf at your house and you're probably waving. It's a celebration. But for the deliverer, it was not a celebration. It was making the biggest decision on that day when he sent his disciples to say, hey, give me that donkey. I'm going to ride into Jerusalem. This is the last week of my life. Hmm. A deliverer. If you are the Joseph of your family, you need to be like Jesus Christ. Your family is going to celebrate that somebody graduated from your university. But they would not know that for that to happen, you spent two weeks praying at the mountain. You pay the price they celebrate. Jesus is coming into Jerusalem riding the donkey. And people are celebrating and praising God. But for him, it's the sentence of death. He's going to die. He's going to be crucified. There is a price. And as, my, as far as salvation is concerned, Christ paid that price. And it started with a day like today we call Palm Sunday. I'm getting into Jerusalem and this is the last week of my life. But I just don't want to get in as if I was pitiful. I'm getting in with enthusiasm because I'm giving my life. You know, in one of the sermons of uh, Billy Graham, he said this. I'm just, I'm just quoting what he said. They did not kill Jesus. He gave his life. Huh. Hallelujah. It made me think that the guy who was next to Jesus saying to him, you can save yourself and save us. Oh yes, Jesus could have done that. But he did not want to run away from his mission. He fulfilled it with enthusiasm, with joy. If you are the Joseph of your family, the deliverer, stop complaining. Give your time. Give your prayers. Do it with enthusiasm. Huh. Like Jesus did. He got into Jerusalem. It was a celebration. 
Hallelujah. People were singing uh, and putting palm, uh, palm leaves on the floor for him to write on. Even, no, even though he knew. For me, those palm leaves on the floor to make you feel good. It's like when sometimes people in your family, <laughs> you know, when you are the Joseph of your family, there's always a moment that people kind of praise God for you. <laughs> even though they give you a hard time. Sometimes they tell you, oh, you are the pastor of the family. <laughs> Sometimes they say, we know God is using you powerfully. Sometimes they kind of encourage you. It's like those moments. But right after that, you face another really hard time. Because if you are the deliverer, you pay the price. And Jesus being the ultimate deliverer paid the ultimate price. His life, his innocent blood had to die. In our retreat, we talk about the cross of Jesus to get a little deeper into understanding that he had to pay a price. And of course, when you pay the price, when the payment is over, that's when the resurrection power kicks in. Mm. He died. On the third day, he rose again. We're going to celebrate that next Sunday, right? The resurrection of Jesus Christ. But there's no resurrection if there's no death. You die first and you rise from the dead. There's no glory in a family. There's no true deliverance. If nobody pays the price, somebody has to live as a living sacrifice. Jesus had to go as a dying sacrifice. But today, we as the instruments God is using... We are not going to present ourselves as dying sacrifices, but as living sacrifices. Hallelujah. 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 There is a price to pay, a price to train you, a price to make you a vessel of God, a, a price to destroy, first of all, all the fruit of those familiar spirits in you. Listen. If you are the Joseph of a family and the work of the spirit, the familiar spirit is pride, believe me, you are also born proudful. Very proud. It's in you as well. So God has to train you to deliver you first. From those spirits. You have to conquer them first. Before you can completely destroy them. In your family. In your nation. And that time of you. Conquering. Those familiar spirits. For God to break those. The fruit of those familiar spirits in you. He has to train you. And that training brings a lot of suffering. Hallelujah. And in 1 Peter, Peter said it's a blessing to suffer innocently for God. We're going to talk about it at our retreat. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. When you are Joseph, you pay the price. For Joseph here, his brothers sold him to be an, a slave. But for Jesus, the price was crucifixion. For Joseph, is slavery. For Jesus, is crucifixion. You know, be encouraged. Maybe you feel like everybody has sold you out to somebody. 
Maybe you feel like everybody in your family has abandoned you or maybe even your friends and everybody. Is God training you? Do you know that? Because God does not want anybody else to glorify themselves in your life. God is going to isolate you. He's going to shape you. He's going to shape you. And that shaping is not easy. It's not easy. You were born in a family uh, that has been invaded by familiar spirit. For God to make you a deliverer, he has to deliver you from them. He has to shape you now into a new person, a new creature, so that you can represent God in your family. You can represent God in your nation. You can represent God in this world. And that shaping is not easy. It's a price to pay. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, God, that sometimes the prayer is not deliver me. Sometimes the prayer should be give me strength to go through. Give me strength to finish the training. So here we are, God. Continue to shape us and continue to give us strength to persevere. Give us strength to go forward. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. People of God, this is the time to give back to the Lord. So please send your offering or tithe via Cash App, PayPal, or Zelle. Second Corinthians 9, 6 through 8 says, But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work.
of God Jesus is the savior of us all but there are some work that he needs to do with us and through us and he has chosen us let us embrace our mission with joy not lamentations a lot of us will be like, why me? Why me all the time, God? Why me? Like complaining. Jesus did not get into Jerusalem as a pitiful. He got in as a king. Face the price as a child of God. Face the price as an instrument of God's glory. And be enthusiastic about it. Rejoice in the price you pay because it's just your formation. God is just training you and preparing you for his glory. In the name of Jesus, I bless your people. I proclaim healing, deliverance. I proclaim understanding and knowledge. And I also proclaim God that everything will point to you the ultimate savior and deliverer. In Jesus' name, bless this coming week as we prepare for our retreat. Be with us, God. Fill us with your presence. Give us the power and the strength to go the way you got into Jerusalem. You got it not complaining. You got it like a king. Help us, God, to embrace our mission as children and servants of the God Almighty, the creator of everything. To you, God is and will always be the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. We all say, Amen. 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 Amen.